Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the loss of Air India Flight 171. I'm Geoffrey Thomas, and delighted to say once again, joined by my co-host, Richard Godfrey in Frankfurt. Good morning to you, Richard. And good afternoon to you, Geoffrey. Viewers, this episode is called Probable Cause. It's episode number 205. So we have refined our plausible hypothesis into the cause of Air India Flight 171 crash on June the 12th, 2025. We have now defined the probable cause. However, we caveat our findings that they are based on the preliminary report, Airport Security, CCTV, and Flight Radar 24 ADSB data. And of course, without the full disclosure of the EAFR, FDR and CVR data, as well as the maintenance logs. Richard, we reported the apparent slow acceleration down the runway as an issue independent from the RAT deployment and engine shutdown. But the emergency appears to have started just as the aircraft rotated to take off. Can you um, lead us on from there? Sure, um, that's uh, quite correct. The uh, acceleration down the runway was uh, slow and we're still investigating exactly what the cause of that might have been. But uh, where things start to get uh, emergency level is uh, during the rotation. The airport security CCTV records the aircraft started the rotation at 080835 uh, UTC. And rotation to takeoff, where the wheels and the weight on the wheels comes uh, off, um, typically lasts around four seconds. And AI-171 was no exception. Uh, there was four seconds between rotation commencing and uh, the weight coming off the wheels and smoke is first seen on the left hand side of the aircraft around two seconds after rotation started at 080837 UTC and that is still during the rotation phase and before actual takeoff uh, there is around two seconds uh, before the air ground sensors transitioned to air mode at 080839 UTC. And the smoke most likely came from the APU battery vent on the left-hand side of the aircraft and just behind the wing. The smoke appeared in a sudden gush and then slowly dissipated in the slipstream and drifted away slowly with the light wind. The initial sudden gush was consistent with a high pressure venting event, as would be expected during a lithium iron cell thermal runaway. Richard, the old saying, there's no smoke without fire. Did the APU lithium ion battery catch fire in your view? Well, there's evidence of a fire in the aft uh, EAFR crash protected memory, uh, the CPM. And that uh, EAFR CPM is part of uh, the crash survivable memory unit. And it was badly burned and unreadable. The EAFR casing is designed to withstand direct flame for five minutes at 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. The aft EAFR uh, CPM suffered extensive damage. The prim preliminary report states the aft EAFR was located after the crash on the rooftop of Building A on the 13th of June 2025. The EAFR had impact and thermal damages to the housing. The wires were protruding from the housing and the connectors were burnt. 
The aft EAFR was substantially damaged and could not be downloaded through conventional means. The CPM was open to inspect the memory card. The damage was extensive. So the EAFR CPM was damaged, in my view, by a combination of fire, chemical corrosion and water ingress. On top of the fire damage and water ingress to the aft EE bay, there was also a chemical hazard as well. Can you tell us about that and the corrosion? Sure. The 787 lithium ion cells uh, uh, commonly use uh, LIPF6 salt in carbonate solvents and contact with moisture hydrolyzes LIPF6 uh, into PF5 and HF. HF is hydrogen fluoride, and that is a very hazardous and reactive chemical. HF and related byproducts attack aluminium, copper, tin, and many connector platings, and can even etch uh, glass epoxies. Water ingress, therefore, increases the acidity and corrosion rate turning a contained runaway into an aggressively corrosive environment. Combination of fire, corrosion, water ingress, that sounds pretty bad. Yeah, and f fire and corrosive contamination and water ingress is not part of the certification envelope. Fire alone is survivable. Uh, the casing is designed, as I said, to resist uh, temperatures up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Corrosion is a different matter. The uh, casing of an EAFR is also de designed to withstand total immersion in water uh, for long periods of time. But the combination of fire and corrosion and water will defeat the design envelope, of the protection of the EAFR. The testing which is done is defined by ED112A, and that does not combine hazards. It proves resistance to fire or impact or immersion in water, but it doesn't consider combining these hazards. So a fire and HF exposure and water ingress is not part of the uh, test program. And the forward EE bay survived because there was no water ingress. That was only in the aft EE bay. And the aft uh, EE bay, EAFR, uh, crash protected memory was extensively damaged beyond data recovery and demonstrating that combined hazards can exceed the ED112A single hazard survivability assumptions. Okay, Richard. So the sequence of events leading up to the crash, can you run through those for us? Yes, yeah, so during rotation at 080837, the first identifiable event in the accident sequence was a lithium ion APU battery thermal runaway in the aft EE bay. At 080841, the APU battery fire and electrical power failure due to water ingress resulted in the rat deployment and dual engine shutdown around four seconds later. At 080843, the fire warning and rat deployment resulted in the fuel switches being moved to cut off in quick succession, two seconds after rat deployment. At 080851, the rat comes online electrically, the transponder power is load shed as it should be, and the ADSB data ceases abruptly. The ADSB data stopped at 080850.871 UTC. 
and around a second later at 080852 UTC, the dual engine restart sequence resulted in engine one fuel switch being moved back to run. 11 seconds after RAP deployment uh, was initiated and one second after the ADSB data ceased. And four seconds later at 080856, the dual engine restart sequence resulted in engine two fuel switch being moved back to run. That's 15 seconds after RAT deployment and five seconds after the ADSB data ceased. So in your view, what was the probable cause of Air India crash? The probable cause of the crash was an uncontained lithium ion APU battery thermal runaway and fire in the aft electronics equipment EE bay, exacerbated by corrosive hydrogen fluoride contamination caused by water ingress into the aft EE bay at rotation. So was there any contributing factors to this, Richard? There were several. Uh, the lithium-ion APU battery containment system failed to prevent the release of fire and corrosive products into the EE bay. And water ingress into the EE bay may indicate Air India non-compliance with the AD 2016-14-04 which is on potable water leaks and requires drip shields and, and ceilings. That was followed in 2024 with an MPRM and the final 2025 AD, effective 18th of June 2025, just six days after the crash, which expanded the actions required because of water leaking into EE bays could cause electrical shorts and loss of functions essential for safe flight. And multiple Boeing service bulletins back this up. There's SB 530031 on drip shields and SB 38009 on water couplings. The third point I would make is the accident demonstrates a regulatory failure. The FAA Special Conditions SC25447, which defined the certification basis for 787 lithium iron battery installations, required only demonstration of containment and venting of a thermal runaway event. It did not require proof of resilience against combined hazards such as fire and HF corrosion and water ingress, which are foreseeable in real world accidents. The next point I would make is the this regulatory shortcoming allowed a certified design to pass compliance testing yet fail in a foreseeable real-world crash scenario, as demonstrated by the destruction of the aft EAFR CPM in the crash survivable memory unit housed in the aft EE bay. So finally, I would state this regulatory shortcoming directly impaired the investigation by allowing the destruction of the aft CPM uh, despite its compliance with ED112A survivability standards. So, Richard, what are the safety recommendations that uh, you would recommend in the light of this? What I would recommend is the FAA and the EASA and the ICAO review the SC25447 and the ED112A with a view to incorporating combined hazard testing. So a thermal runaway with an HF release and water or foam ingress. For lithium ion battery installations and CPM uh, units in the EAFRs, and to require certification 
demonstration of survivability under such combined hazards. It is also recommended that the DGCSA, the FAA, EASA and ICAO review the Air India compliance with the ADs and service bulletins relating to water ingress into EE bays on all Boeing 787 aircraft. And of course, that recommendation of yours, um, while we're talking about the 787, also would apply to other lithium-ion batteries on all types of aircraft, I would assume. Yeah, it's the same uh, for Boeing, for Airbus and all other aircraft manufacturers who use uh, lithium-ion batteries um, on their aircraft. And this goes right across um, many different types of aircraft, uh, not just the different manufacturers. Mm, absolutely. Well, that's an um, incredible piece of work, uh, Richard. Thank you very much indeed for um, the work you've done on this. It's um, quite extraordinary and certainly raises some very alarming issues um, when it comes to a, to multiple failures. Um, so, viewers, that's all we've got time for today. We're going to take a break tomorrow and we're going to come back on Sunday to answer your questions on this uh, probable cause. And so please do like us, please subscribe to us, please do join us. We'd really appreciate your support and keep those wonderful comments coming and those fabulous questions. We do appreciate them very much indeed. And Richard, uh, once again, thank you very much indeed for your uh, input today. It's been fantastic. You're very welcome. And viewers, we look forward to your company on Sunday. Uh, thank you again. And, have, and all of you, have a great weekend. Talk to you Sunday.